when we look at relationships we don't see them as individuals we see it as a dance between couples you know mm. so if one is pushing more the other one's pulling more if one is pulling more and one is staying stuck you know so it's not the responsibility of one person in the relationship in that sense it is a joint responsibility hi everyone welcome to our chat today with dr anvita madan behel on how to optimize your relationship health and it's on sex and intimacy dr anvita madan behel holds a phd in counseling psychology from columbia university and the majority of her work is based on psychosexual and relationship therapy reducing sexual violence and gender disparity and mental health and diversity training she has extensive experience in diversity and cross cultural training and she specializes in issues related to sex sexuality sexual health and provides psychosexual and cultural therapy yes. hello and how are you i am well thank you welcome to our chat in the context of what you do what is wellness to you so wellness for us is more holistic you know and so i'm speaking particularly here because we are going to talk about relationships and intimacy and sex normally when we think about sex we always think about it physically actually there's a more holistic point of view to it you have to look at well-being from the emotional the cognitive the thoughts that you have around it the physical the relational people never really give weight to that uh, but how is your relationship health has a direct impact on it um and even to a certain extent like societal like what is the impact or the spiritual on your sexual well-being so it's a more holistic way of looking at it and not unidimensional that's wonderful how should people optimize their relationship health so i think um optimizing relationship health for me a big one would be communication and intimacy and i think both those areas like we always talk about communication 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 mm -hmm. because this idea that oh he or she should just know they've known me for so many years doesn't really exist nobody is mm -hmm. mind readers and what you need is your needs and you need to be able to share it um and uh, there needs to be communication and the other aspect is intimacy and what that means is i think you need to work on a relationship so it's the small thing not the big gestures not mm -hmm. flying somebody to paris or having a massive uh you know weekend away or something it's about holding hands and watching tv it's coming and giving a hug when you enter the house um is just putting an arm around the shoulder or just very gently with your fingers touching somebody as you pass them these are all things that you know build on the communication and the intimacy they both build on the trust and safety and security of the relationship and mm -hmm. it just makes the relationship more robust you know to go through any crisis if they were to come okay what are the most important elements you would say in a relationship just stretching on the idea that i was talking about communication and intimacy what i would say is that people really need to know themselves um mm -hmm. and it's really important for any relationship for people to have two individuals in it um you know a lot of times people say we are like do do just some ek jaan type of thing and all it doesn't work you need to have separation there has to be two individuals in a relationship and so you need to know yourself you need to know who you are what are your needs what's important to you and that is true for both people it's i'm not saying it's one or the other for both people that's really essential and i think once you understand your own non negotiables your mm -hmm. own like what is important to you you can actually bring it to the relationship you know so i think knowing yourself 
and then mm-hmm. building on the communication trust and intimacy become important aspects i think what media society everybody you know personifies these relationship which are very enmeshed relationships where oh we can't be separated or anything but it's what really an individual needs to be able to grow and it needs to have interdependence like i love the word interdependence so mm-hmm. you are independent but you are interdependent on somebody else so there's a two way street what we really need to understand is that when dependency becomes really high the fear or chances of power imbalance can happen uh, it can happen that one person's needs can be looked you know not important and not looked mm-hmm. at all and uh, for somebody else you know only one person's needs are in a relationship being attended to so the power imbalance becomes very problematic whereas if you're an individual you're independent you have your own thoughts you have your own ideas and then you have somebody to share it with like mm-hmm. i'm not for one saying that the interdependence shouldn't be there mm-hmm. but the dependency is problematic wonderful that's wonderful advice how would you define the difference between sex and intimacy so um it does and uh, it's a good question because when people come in with sexual problems we re- rarely start by asking them to work on the sexual behavior between two people mm-hmm. what we start is with them working on the intimacy so if we had to think about building blocks intimacy is the first building block in some ways it's the massive foundation in a relationship um so it is got to do with how safe secure uh you feel with someone you know how comfortable mm-hmm. you feel with someone because any relationship requires us to be vulnerable with our partner and so that intimacy allows that we feel like okay we can be emotionally physically sexually be naked with this person and feel safe about it right so there's that intimacy there whereas sex is the physical act of sex that can mean different things for different people it could be oral it could be penetrative it could be uh just uh, you know verbal sex like so sex could be anything but more okay. i see more sex as a physical behavior or actions versus intimacy is more building um, a safe relationship and trusting okay. relationship yeah okay how would you describe trust in a relationship what i want to really say and what i think is really important when we think about trust in a relationship is trust in the relationship is dependent on what two people decide and i'm going to use a word which might seem harsh to people but the contract they decided right, right? what did they contract mm-hmm. so there are two individuals going back to my point you as an individual should know your needs and everything so you get into a relationship and you say okay these are my non negotiables this is really important for me uh, this is what i will bring this is who i am and this is what i expect from you like if you are somebody who believes in uh, a non monogamous relationship you're not for me or somebody else will say uh, i want a monogamous relationship or i want a polygamous relationship whatever your needs are you bring them to the table and each couple and this is very individual for each partnership they decide what are the contracts of this relationship you know mm-hmm. they're not based mm-hmm. on what society says are the rights and wrongs or morals yeses and noes about it the partnership decides this is how we want our relationship to be mm-hmm. and i think trust is broken when some one of the partner breaks that contract and so that for me is the breaking of the trust whatever the contract was between you okay. and i also think when people misuse the vulnerability of their partner in some ways you know misuse what they know is their vulnerability or their weak points that also breaks the trust but people who actually cheer you on based mm-hmm. on your um you know weaknesses or vulnerability and all of us have them nobody is mm-hmm. perfect mm-hmm. uh but that really builds on the trust and the safety of the relationship okay what are some of the main issues that you want people to look out for that you want to warn them about 
before things get ba- worse or bad or get to a stage where they cannot handle the relationship anymore what's important to you know is that every relationship needs to be worked at mm-hmm. and when you get into a partnership you're in a different time and phase of your life and your needs are different and as you grow your needs change now where's the relationship then you contracted for something else you decided on something else but now you're saying oh but i want something different like i i need something different what do you do then you know and have you kept your partner with you you know have you have they been part of your journey have they seen your journey are they with your journey are they understanding your journey and once again this is gender agnostic um so i think that's really important that you need to have the person be part of your journey otherwise the distance can be very far apart and you know people just go in different directions uh but i also think what happens a lot of times is people start making assumptions you know and about the relationship about them about the other person and you know we the favorite line that everybody said after so many years she should have known or he should have known and it doesn't work like that you have to constantly share what had troubled you what you had not liked because it's very easy for things to fester mm-hmm. and one small thing happens and you are like oh i'm you know i'm not going to say anything because he or she should have figured it out you know i'm not going to say anything and next thing you know something else happened something else happened and it's become so big because you decided not to say anything and so it just creates the gaps and the problems and what could have been handled by one normal small fight or a conversation just becomes this massive thing in some ways don't be fearful of sharing what's going on uh trust your partner to try and understand your problem or understand it so give them that opportunity okay how important is sex in a relationship sex is amazing okay. sex is so i'm not coming from it from a moral perspective and i think uh, we're all sexual beings there's a reason that we were created in a certain way and we had hormones and bodies and you know all of it so that we were meant to have sex Uh, but what we've also learned is that people's relationship with sex is very different some want to have and some want to have loads of it and have very high libidos and some kind of feel like asexual they don't want to have sex at all some want to have it orally some want to have it anal some like so there's just so much diversity there um that i think it's a personal relationship your personal relationship with what your sexual identity is and what you like about it what would be important is that don't be a mismatch like you know people will say oh i didn't mention i don't like sex like before starting a relationship but i just have to get along with it you know i have to go along with it it doesn't work because 5 years later that partner might still be there and you still don't like sex so it's better from the beginning if you share what your you know sexual choices or identity are uh so that you can find a partner and that's something when we look at all the match making sites and other things and everything a lot of times that is maybe overlooked is do you match sexually do your sexual choices match with your partner's choices okay great you know there's all this excitement in a relationship whether it's sex whether it's communication you see a lot of people in new relationships constantly talking to each other how do you advise them to keep things exciting in all the different areas of their life as they proceed with a relationship so relationships definitely need to be worked on you know this idea that oh we've been together for like 10 20 30 years and why do we need to work on it now uh we've known each other for a year 10 years 5 years 50 years even at that point relationships need to be worked at it's really easy for a person to feel that they might be taken for granted or their needs are not being met or they're not being seen in a relationship it's really easy for that to happen um so to constantly see and be seen 
you know, is, is really important. And you have to keep doing that and you have to work on it. When you want to see someone or notice someone or, you know, let them know, I see you, I, I know you, I, I, you're here. You have to work at it. It doesn't just happen. And similarly, you need to be seen. So you need to bring something to the table as well. Okay. What happens when people have been together for, a, for some time? They started off on the same page, but somewhere along the way, start wanting different things sexually later on in their relationships. When we look at relationships, we don't see them as individuals. We see it as a dance between couples, you know. Mm. So if one is pushing more, the other one's pulling more. If one is pulling more and one is staying stuck, you know, so... It's not the responsibility of one person in the relationship in that sense. It is a joint responsibility because, uh, you know, why is somebody pulling? Is it because somebody is just standing st still and not moving at all? And that's why they have to pull. W similarly, why is somebody pushing? What we need to remember is to understand what has changed and why has it changed? What, what became different? And where is this person coming from? Um, a lot of time, you know, we hear that a lot from women where they say, oh, now we've had children, we've had it. Now what do we need to go on keep having sex for? And my partner wants sex and it's just like, it's too much and I just want to go to bed or, you know, watch some TV and get into my pajamas. Who wants to get into some lingerie or get ready and everything? It's too much effort. And it could be gender agnostic. So there could be a woman who might say, I really want to have sex and the partner is like, I'm really tired, a male partner and things. So you could be at different points, but it's understanding what's happening because it literally sometimes is that, you know, one of the partners must have had a really busy day. So if you want to have sex and you need to have sex and it's the libidos are being mismatched, what you can do is help them out and say, oh, why don't we have sex on Sunday? Because you don't work that day, you know, or why don't we go away for dinner or order in and that way you don't need to, you know, neither one of us needs to like clean up the kitchen or anything. Uh, and then that way we'll feel refreshed and we will not feel tired and everything. So there are easy solutions a lot of times. But once again, people are not seen and then they feel frustrated that their struggles or, you know, they get frustrated saying, oh, the other person doesn't even notice the amount of work I'm doing. Uh, so why should and then you can see how that is festering that person doesn't love me, he doesn't see or she doesn't see how much I'm working, uh, they don't like me any longer, or they don't care about me any longer. And you can just see how this, you know, just becomes a bigger issue. Try and understand and empathize from where somebody's coming. And then say there is an impasse where people are in different places. It is amazing how every relationship, every partnership comes up with a solution for them. But it is particular to that partnership, whatever it might be. Some might give more, some might take more, some might compromise more, some might say, okay, let's bring in another person if this is an issue. So it is very creative and it is totally based on a partnership, on a you know, couple. Especially when we do family therapy, one of the tenets of it is that it's a circular causality. It's not linear. It's not like, and, and we see that a lot with children, you know. So children, we say, are mostly symptoms of a problem that's happening in a family. So a child is acting out in school. But when you will actually go back and see how come the child is, it might be a symptom of their problems at home, the parents are not getting along, or, you know, there might be some financial problem happening or stress happening at home, and the child doesn't know what to do. So it comes out as a behavioral problem. But as you can see that it's all connected, it's rarely to do with, you know, and what normally people end up doing is saying, oh, we need to send the child to detention center, or we need to send the child for therapy or child. But the problem is not with the child. The problem mm -hmm. is that there's something happening at home which is impacting the child. And then the child, because they're stressed from school and the school's calling the parents, the parents are like that, see, it's your fault. And then that problem becomes bigger. So 
how everything is connected um and a lot of times one partner might be deactive saying how my husband tends to be the disciplinarian and i be the soft person but what we have analyzed and discussed is that if i activated myself a little bit more if i disciplined more he would be less put in that situation right so it is this dance of what am i doing and what is he bringing and if i activated myself more he would deactivate and if he deactivated himself i would activate myself so it's not you know it's it's not caused by one person it's caused by that dance that push and pull i cannot stress enough knowing yourself knowing yourself emotionally physically sexually relationally knowing yourself is really 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 important because only then can you form those boundaries only then can you form you know ask for your needs ask what you need uh, bring yourself in the relationship uh, very often people don't know and then mm-hmm. they keep feeling something inside thinking oh it's not working it's not working it's not working but what is not working so knowing yourself is really important in in any relationship and then to have people around you who will support you no matter what you know i think having that support is very important people who listen in to you mm-hmm. will edge you on to say go communicate go talk go get help whatever um so having knowing yourself and having support around you i think two of the most important things in my mind that was brilliant are intimacy and lust related so intimacy and lust lust is um an interesting uh, word as well you know sometimes it's seen as a dirty word and it's seen as oh you know people who lust are not nice or not good but lust after all is just another sexual connection right it's mm-hmm. something that you feel lustful some way so it's 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 mostly only a sexual rela- uh, relationship with someone i think you can lust someone and build intimacy on them but i think it's little bit different i think intimacy has lots more to do with emotional and relational and in my eyes and i might be wrong uh lust for me is more sexual okay thank you so much it was such a pleasure to have you here thank you all for being here thank you for listening to this chat if you enjoyed it please subscribe to this page please subscribe to our podcast on apple and spotify wellness curated and follow us on instagram wellness curated the number 1 thank you